how much of a help that was. Here's a little preview for you. So this week is habitat restoration growing endeavor. So as we always start with our question of the day, so what is your favorite bird? I think, um, I was, I was telling Miss Capizola, I went to the Delaware River over the weekend and we saw this big bald eagle. So, oh, wow. that's my favorite bird. Ever. Which is, <laughs> what's, what's it called? A bald eagle. Oh, bald eagle. Oh, bald eagle. Oh, bald eagle. Yeah. The white eagle's more powerful than the bald eagle. Yes, yes. They're very we rare. had one down here yeah. crying. Yeah. She was yeah. trying to get a crow. <laughs> and the other yeah. day we were at the deli, John's Deli, and a uh, bald eagle was sitting in a tree waiting to get a duck. But every time the duck would see him coming, she goes underwater. It took him 10 minutes and he gave up. And he went back to the tree and waited. And their wingspans are like six feet They're long. so yeah. terrible, those balls. Yeah. Has anyone seen a resident eagle in town? No. no. They have, so, so at the end of the reservoir, going in over the Theobury line. Right. Okay, you're almost at the very end. You can't really see them now, but during the fall and the winter, they have at the very end, right near the edge of the water, there's a tree there, and they have a huge nest. This is the third year now. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. At the end of the grass, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that where you go down, like around the Grand Circle? I think that's the Circle? Oh, yeah. Was it all over 37 here? Yeah, he just yeah. uh, oh, next to the reservoir. Well, the reservoir is on 37, right? Yeah. So if you go to the end, which is on the Danbury side? Yeah. yeah. I know that. It's just, you know, the actually, the there's that one, I don't know the name of the road, but there's a road that's almost parallel mm -hmm. to the. If it's during over the, by the queue. Yeah, like when the right? leaves come off, it's almost directly across from here, and you got to kind of look up towards the end, and they, they're right near the water edge there. They're very high. I don't know how they balance it out there because it kind of like hangs, hangs over. And I'm saying, how does that big nest <laughs> yeah. I know they have a but sanctuary they, in Southbury for the eagles. And yeah, they have uh, yeah. so. Have you gone to that where you could look out and you could see them? Uh, oh, the water yeah. Yeah, I have oh, yeah. it. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, super connected. And they, they have them at the um, like a little chicago 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 chicago. Chicago. Yeah. Eagles. That's a sea pot. Yeah. Yeah, so they, they, you can, yeah, you have to chicago. wait till they open the gate to go there. Yes. It's, it's FDA approved. Yeah. 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 They have all the big satellites. I think they do it They have floor. over 25 satellites there. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, and, no. and the Chapad Dam, you can uh, see it a little bit now with the trees there. The bald eagles, they give you the right to go take pictures. Yeah, it's oh, pretty. Wow. They go, it's they beautiful there. Wow. It's beautiful there. And the you fish see them the all. Yeah, yeah. I've heard that. I've never been here. Oh, you have yeah, it in there? What's all exit 10? Oh, yeah, yeah, I think it's in the fall that they have it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think the fall and, and I think just before December, around December, November. Yeah, we took They um, have a big thing. Yeah. Yeah. We took my nieces and nephews. I think it's beautiful. They were pretty. Yeah. I'll have to go check that out. Yeah. Well, if you get off exit 10, where that yeah. diner is, yeah. you go over the bridge. You take a left, go over the bridge. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to take another left to another bridge, okay. another left, and it goes right down. To, it's in Southbury, I think. Okay. And it goes down, and you see the gate, and you see all these big satellites. You wonder what is going on. It scares <laughs> you to look at them all. But then it says the Stevenson Dam. Okay. And then you go, I mean, park in, then you just, if the gate is open, you could go through. If okay. the gate's not open, then they don't let you do it. Right. They have certain times they open. Because yeah. no. I go and show all my friends all these satellites during the They took all these <laughs> pictures of them. Some are huge. Some are huge, like a tree. Yeah, That's good. yeah it's a pretty place. Well, cool. Yeah. Very Who wants to go next? <laughs> <laughs> I will say the penguin. My my son only because my son when he was a little boy he loved penguins. And he, we did a lot with penguins so. and all the movies, the penguin movies. We just fell in love. We actually did the penguin experience up at um, Mystic Aquarium. Oh. You can actually go in for his birthday. He was twenty five. You could bring a couple of friends, and they brought out some penguins and the kids. Oh, they're cute. Oh, oh nice. yes. It was really sweet. We just had it was just one on one with the penguins. Oh. So I know. So yeah, he. I got really in, into the penguins when he 
I have to say hummingbirds. Yes. yes. Yeah, they're 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 unique. Um, I'd love to see the bald eagles. Mm -hmm. yeah. I bought a bird bath, but nothing's gone in it yet because there's an artificial bird in it. Do you think I should take it out? Maybe. Maybe it's like I just bought it yesterday. Maybe it's occupied, maybe? Or maybe like what it? I don't know. I'm just thinking of putting something in it to uh, attract them, to take a bath. Give the birds a chance to find it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's really yeah. cute. It's gray yeah. and white. Yeah. yeah. And the uh, little other artificial bird is in the middle. Yeah, maybe give it a chance. Give it like maybe a chance. Maybe I should buy another one. Like little, <laughs> like oh yeah, you buy yeah, another one. Maybe they don't like that color. Get a little wind up birdie and put it in there. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, I was thinking of, I have to put something in it to attract them. No, I, I can research that for you. <laughs> <laughs> they probably to drink some water too because I know birds need water. Yeah. Maybe they don't want to take a bath. Hey, maybe they just I don't know if they just drink the water. No. I haven't seen anything. I've been sitting out there for an hour. Mm -hmm. Nothing's covered. <laughs> well, once they find it, <laughs> no, they're happy if I bought it. They're bashful. They don't like taking bats in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> I had one one year, and a rat. It was two pieces. This one's all one piece, and you got to screw it from the bottom, and then you could put it away. The one I had. A raccoon, I seen him. He got on the top of it and it must have hit him on the head and he broke it. No. I had all kinds of robins and blue jays and cardinals. They were all taking their bath early in the morning. Mm. And when I got up, I see a raccoon. He's sitting there and he didn't know how he's going to get it. Well, he got up there and he broke it. So I never had a bird bath after that. But I'm going to try again because the one that I bought is low and okay. to the ground and it comes apart. It's real heavy too. So I know that uh, nothing can knock that down. Every cross you get some Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. I hope something happens. Well, I like the robin because when I was in grammar school, uh, the teacher had put up a robin or a blue jay. So if you were good that day, you got to be a robin. <laughs> 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 so, and I like the way their uh, dress changes. From spring to uh, summer, you know, it's like it's like orange in the spring and then it turns red yeah. toward the summer. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, I love that. Um, oh, I have. I love this indigo bunting. It's it's very rare to see it, and it's so it has such a beautiful color of blue. I just love it. And I looked it up. It's supposed to be spiritual, so it's, it's nice to see it. I saw it like twice. This year, right on our deck. I also love the hummingbird. I have a lot of little packs on it. But anyway, it's not my favorite. I agree. The blue birch probably one of my favorites. Plus, I, I do like, I don't see them that often, but I hate it. Okay. Yeah, oh, really yeah, would be oh, happy oh, because so oh, that yeah. thing is you so big. Yeah. Yeah. They are so huge. Yes. They're so rare. And I mean, they knock on a wood and, and, and maybe somebody's like a little head of theirs can go. I know. Once on, we got a film on it. I couldn't believe my husband could get a picture of it. Really? How Going, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I'll take it like this. It was so funny. Well, they take the uh, bugs out of the tree. Yes. That's the only thing they knock on that tree. You think they're not going to let the door. <laughs> I know, it's so loud with them. And I get bugs. I know. Yeah. Well, I said, I told my, first I start, I get in there and I said, what are you doing on my trees? And I said, wait a minute, that's telling me there's something to make with this tree. You know, they'll take care of it. <laughs> yeah, the red breast stick. Um, I don't know, I kind of like the cardinal. They're Pretty. Even like the, the female ones that aren't so brightly colored, I like their orange beaks. And, mm -hmm. and it says that's like somebody's, come, you know, yeah. yeah. I love them oh, yeah. because that's true. we have them and it's so cute because when they've made it and they're paired off and they come down to the feeder and the female will sit there and the male will feed her. 
Yes, I've seen that too. My neighbor had a bird theater, and he had two girlfriends. He had two girlfriends. One was hiding in my rhododendron, and and he brought the seed, and she tells she was mad at him because she already fed the other one. (laughs) (laughs) It's cute. It's really cute. I couldn't believe it. How how uh, the cardinals are. I don't want yeah. your leftovers. Yeah, it's really cute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's, okay, again. Oh, anyways, my favorite bird, favorite bird is also the bluebird because we have one in our yard right now. Yeah. I think if I was younger, I probably would have said the peacock was my favorite bird. Oh, yeah. Oh, I wish they'd get peacock. Why didn't I say peacock? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. You can see one at Harry Brook Park. They still really? have it. Really? Yes, they have it in a cage. Is it colorful? Yes. Mm-hmm. And it, his his wing. It, it, I mean, he doesn't have enough rope really to open up to because he's so big. The wing is so big. They have it there for years. Oh wow. Peacock. Yeah. I sometimes go walking down there so I can see it. If you whistle, uh, yeah. they'll open up their wings. Yeah. 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 If, if you whistle, you whistle. Really? Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Just in time. You're learning. What's your What's your favorite bird? Bluebird. Yes. Yes. Why? Yes. We're bunting indigo. Either one. They're both blue. <laughs> <laughs> blue is a key factor. <laughs> bluebird wins. Yes. Bluebird is the most popular. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Seems like it. Okay. okay. So first, we're gonna talk about habitat loss, which is a little sad, but don't worry, it gets better. So. <laughs> Habitat restoration is a direct response to habitat loss. So habitat loss refers to the reduction in the amount of space where a a particular species or a group of species can survive and reproduce. So this decreases the biodiversity within like an ecosystem. If less animals can populate the um, the area, the less biodiversity you have. And the less biodiversity you have, the less healthy the ecosystem becomes and then eventually it kind of breaks apart and everyone leaves and mm-hmm. then that land gets kind of just deserted and that, yeah. so some main causes of habitat loss are agriculture urbanization deforestation you know cutting down trees like lumber mills resource extraction um getting natural gas or oil um and then the release of pollutants can come back down, like it can go up into the air and come back down as acid rain, and that can just degrade the plants, I guess. And then it's not just us, don't worry, it can also happen through environmental big catastrophes like volcanic eruptions, tsunamis, earthquakes, rising sea levels. Um, so that is a little unfortunate. Can I ask you something getting yes. back to the birds? I never seen a Baltimore Oriole. Does anybody see any? We have some yes. in our neighborhood. Yes. You yeah. have some. Yes. yes. I haven't seen out, any for years. We put out. Or, I know this year. I can't believe. A lot. And he came. Mm-hmm. He came back recently. Oh. They like oranges, and they seem really. To that, yeah, yeah, my husband put orange slices out for them, oh, and wow. they like jelly. A little thing of jelly. A little thing of jelly. Yeah, I know. Oh. I think they're so. They're so, so beautiful. They sing so pretty. Exactly. Right. I think they sing better than any bird. He, he does. They have a beautiful deck. call. Yeah, we put it on our deck. The, there's All a right. feeder. There's actually a hummingbird feeder that you can stick an orange in, and it has a little tray for jelly, and it's a, it's a bigger feed. It was like the one you had on there, okay. and um, and it they go in there. They actually were feeding on my hummingbird feeder, which is smaller. So we put the bigger one out just today because. We saw them again, and we were like, "Oh my God!" Yeah. So we really see them. They're so pretty. Yeah. Well, we're around the house. They are. Floors. They're beautiful. Mm. Oh, this so is jelly. Not the yeah. Jelly. You put in. You could put a little dish out, and um, he had. I don't know. How he. Some of them he like tied with a t- with a, a tie, like you know the tie she has around bags, mm-hmm. and he just tied an orange around one of these hooks we had. Oh, so and then one he stuck into the fever. So. My husband has all these contraptions. <laughs> Does any other bird come and eat it too? What was that? Does a hummingbird on the orange? Yeah. No. You know what feeds on it? Um, the catbird. 
Oh, the cat oh, really? no oh. orange. The nice that. thing is the chipmunks leave it alone. Oh, do they? <laughs> I know, <they're> <laughs> but they're, they're a problem this yeah. year. So, <laughs> they uh, take up so yeah, they they've been eating all the bird seed. And, yeah. So okay. nobody has we put the oranges out a couple of times and the Orioles came down and nobody else touched it. So I was really relieved. My husband yeah. takes them for a ride. We have a have a heart and Oh, do you? oh, Desi, and uh, take some for a ride. Don't we you? have so many. So really? They have another home, so they don't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, that's why they hide it. They're just they're here, here, but I didn't think they were. Yeah, yeah. I know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Look at we have look the, our, our, like, our fox in our neighborhood, and she goes up to ours. I know. Hey, you see, and she always has because she's feeding her babies. I'm like, go, Mom. <laughs> so three main types of, like, three major kinds of habitat loss. So it's like habitat destruction, which is kind of like us, you know, bulldozing trees and all that. Um, habitat degradation. So this is a little different than the other two. This is more like a natural. What process. is that thing up there? So this is the Burmese pipeline. So oh. in Florida, Burmese pythons are becoming, they're an invasive species and they're mm -hmm. becoming a huge problem because they're invading the Everglades and they're starting to eat all of like the middle sized like animals, like the, the bigger rodents, like the deer. And so the apex, the apex predators at the top of the food chain are starting to like have like food scarcity and they're starting to have some problems. So invasive species you have to watch out for. Because they can also ruin habitats and ecosystems. Right. So if you ever like, sometimes you have probably experienced it with like weeds and stuff. The weeds that you don't want the invasive species, they'll move in and take over, mm -hmm. and they'll grow faster, mm -hmm. and they'll start putting shade, and then the plants underneath it don't, you know, they can't survive. What what area is that on the bottom right hand corner that says like the the years? Where I is that? I actually have no clue, but. It ha it's a good um, representation of habitat fragmentation. You can see the roads and stuff starting to move in and the mm -hmm. green dissipates. And so, like, even like back here, there's still a lot of connection between the greens. So the animals, they're called wildlife corridors. I'll get to that a little bit later. But having just that little connection mm -hmm. can save like the habitat and the ecosystem because they still have that like land, I guess, even though it's not all in one chunk, it's still connected all together. But my guess it's on, it kind of looks like Florida, but like just upside down. Hmm. But I wish, yeah. <coughs> yeah, so these fragments, they're not large enough to support the species that need the territory. So anyway, don't worry. Not all bad news. There are ways we can help and we can do things. Not like the big stuff. There's a lot of like organizations and nonprofits that actually address a lot of the bigger issues. But we can help in our own way. So habitat restoration is what this is all about. Um, so you can either donate or you can get your hands dirty and you can make your pollinator gardens or your, like your butterfly gardens, which I know a lot of you have, which is really cool. Um, so habitat restoration is the purposeful rehabilitation of an area to create a functioning ecosystem. And I know definitely a lot of people on YouTube, this became a big thing, like over the pandemic, everybody was making like, mm -hmm. all this great stuff. It was really cool to watch some of like the time lapses people made. Um, so successful habitat restoration requires food, water, and nutrients, like space and then shelter for the animals. So a lot of habitat that's being lost, there's also, there's obviously like the big animals, but a lot of birds and butterflies and like a lot of the insects, insects are losing their homes or whatever. So by planting, we can give it back, to, we can give their homes back to them and then we benefit because all of our crops get pollinated. So yeah, these are the wildlife corridors. This is kind of a good, so this would be the fragmentation we were talking about before. And then this is like kind of more of a corridor. We're all kind of connected. Yeah. So is that considered like erosion, what you're saying? I think yeah. so. 
Definitely. Like, yeah. Like it all splitting apart. So biodiversity. So this is like the variety of living species on Earth. Like, so, the, so biodiversity in an ecosystem it includes the plants, the fungi, and the animals, like all together. So you want as many different species in your garden or in your area as possible. Because the more, like, the more the merrier, uh, always. <laughs> So, because the greater the biodiversity, the healthier the ecosystem. Because each um, organism has kind of like multiple ways to get food and to sustain itself. So all of the plant eaters, if there's a lot of different varieties of plants, they're not just eating all of one plant. They have a variety. So then the plants can survive because they're not getting eaten all the time. Um, and some of the Two of the most biodiverse places, or like areas in the world, there's like the coral reefs in the ocean, and then wetlands on land. So wetlands are like marshes and like swamps, mm -hmm. and sometimes they're referred to as... It's good for beavers. Yes, wait, Rat the man. nurseries. Yes of the world. They really are, yeah. And that's yeah. where everything is born and they can survive, and there's water, and they're all sheltered. What about the rainforest? Yes. I feel like that is like almost like the biggest wetland, you know? Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I want to go to the rainforest so bad. <laughs> okay, okay. So then, when we make our butterfly gardens, and Oh, and there's also these cool things called bug hotels. I've never made one, but I watched a couple videos about them. They seem cool, but I don't know if I would want to have one at my house. What kind of bugs are they attracting? Mm. Oh, I, I think the like ones. ants or. It was a lot of like the different varieties of bees. Beetle. I think. Okay. Oh, like okay. That's a bee house. Yeah, the bees, and then I think I don't know, like the healthy beetles. I think okay. is what this. Okay. I wasn't very clear on how to like <clears throat> keep out like you know like the undesirable bugs. I wasn't right. quite sure how that worked. I bought one, a little bee house, and it said just put it where like it would get the morning sun. Oh. And you could like put it up on the house or just um on the ground, like near <clears throat> like one of the flowering plants. And I kept it at a bush away from the house because right. I'm afraid of bees. And I did look and it looks like um, not all of the holes are full, but yeah. something's in there. But it does say when the weather gets cold, like in October, put it in a shed. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then bring it back out. Well, I hope I remember. Oh, so they survive. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. Yeah, I, think, I don't know. I think they look kind of cool. Yeah. And there was nothing to do. They just said, hang it or Place it and then you're done. Maybe, maybe I'll try it out. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yes, then I found so who benefits in our area from our endeavors? So obviously we have the hummingbirds. This is, I found out the names of some of them. The broad billed hummingbird. That's not this one. Yeah. Hmm. Then there's over 300 different species of bees in the pet kit. Wow. wow. They love clover. I hate to mow the lawn when I see all the clover. Because <laughs> the lady down near me, she has honey boxes. Oh, so they. It's like they come uh, to my house and grab all the honey. Mm. Oh, yeah, I thought that was cool. I didn't realize we had so many bees. And then here's some of the butterflies I guess we have. Mm -hmm. okay. Have you guys seen any? Yes. Oh, yeah. Of these ones? Mm -hmm. They're flying around and there's no butterfly bushes ready. Um, I know, no. They have to go on other stuff. That's why I got lilies, I got other flowers, maybe they'll attract yeah. the butterflies. Oh, lilies are just yeah. coming out for us. Yeah. Biodiversity. <laughs> and I know the state insect is um, Primantis. Do we oh, have a state All Primantis? Oh. Yeah. Do we have a state butterfly? I don't know. Yeah, I have to Google that one. <laughs> What's our state mm -hmm. bird? It's robin. Robin? Yeah. It's yeah. flower is mountain laurel. Yes. Yeah. 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 
Oh, and I was telling, I think, Carolyn about this. Um, so I, when I was doing my research, I was watching a lot of videos and all this stuff. And um, one thing that I found interesting, a lot of people were saying, if you want to have the most, like, like, uh, I guess, natural bees and, like, butterflies come to your property, they really like, like, the natural wildflowers. Mm -hmm. I don't know that. I thought you just could just put out whatever you want and they would come. <laughs> well, I guess if you want even more. That's probably you know, we, we didn't have these kind of flowers before and they had to go on wild. Yeah. 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 So roots, and so we have wild flocks. You see them near the road, they're blue. Mm -hmm. They're flocks. And they they attract a lot of butterflies. Yeah. yeah. And hummingbirds go on it too. That's probably all they had to do. Yeah. And we got all kinds of flowers. Yeah, maybe we can recognize them. Um, I thought I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Right. So then these are two videos. They're pretty short. Let explain. Um, Through your landscape, because it's going to provide habitat for pollinators. We know that pollinators are directly linked to our food. Let me restart that. So these are about like the benefits and like some tips, I guess. I thought it was short. I thought it was You should short. consider adding a butterfly garden to your landscape because it's going to provide habitat for pollinators. We know that pollinators are directly linked to our food supply, and there's a big crisis worldwide with uh, pollinator decline. When designing a butterfly garden, you want to make sure you include host plants, which is where the butterflies will lay their eggs. Kuti is a really great low-maintenance native plant. Uh, in addition to being very hardy and low maintenance, it's also a host plant for the Atala butterfly. So without that host plant, the butterflies aren't going to be able to complete their full life cycle in the garden. The addition of a water source is key to attracting wildlife to the landscape. So just like you and I, you know, birds and small mammals are going to need a good consistent water source. And if you do add one, you want to make sure you're cleaning it out pretty regularly, so you're not getting any algae in there or any mosquito breeding happening. I think that's in Florida, so I don't know if that's... Did you see the bird bath? <laughs> there was yeah. a bird bath. I think it's a sweet Yes, yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. maybe yeah. And then this one, the link is on the back of your pamphlet. I don't know if you have time to watch it. Because we're going to go to bird houses. Okay, cool. you, sh you should... Get mm -hmm. Unstated wildflowers start to bloom. Yeah, that talks a lot about the wildflowers. Yes, this is our activity. Okay, we can end out in the lobby. Very real.